And it looks like our round one is Brian versus Ernest. That would make sense why Jake showed us Ernest's yeah, profile. That sounds right. I'm I'm trying to get profiles for most of the players here. Okay. Um so if if you're watching this and you're one of our regular players, please feel free to let come me down. know if you would like a profile. I'll Holler try to get at it up. me or Andy and uh, yeah. we will get your profile we'll on get there. It up there. Now I'm I'm not doing the younger younger players here. Sure. Yeah. So eighteen or above and yep. if you're one of our regulars, let me know and I'll try and get something for you. No worries. It does help when we can see who's coming. And now we have faces to associate with the Absolutely. Cards. And again, we're broadcasting live from Honolulu, Hawaii at Other Realms, comic and game specialist. If you come on down, we're at the Nimitz Center. and uh, we have Right behind the Best Buy. Right behind the Best Buy. Tons of games, magic being one of them, but also uh, role-playing games, comics, tons of comics down Board here. games Board everywhere. Board games, uh, D&D, whatever Deck you need building. Tabletop, huge, biggest, one of the largest paint uh, supplies. Yeah, Warcraft. Uh, sorry, no, Warhammer and uh, War Machine. Yeah, um, selections I've ever seen. And they and have regular, yeah, mini big, events, big painting um, tutorials and competitions on weekends and stuff. So, if you're a geek of any sort and you feel like coming down to the store, there's lots of people down here to welcome you for lots of different hobbies, and they'll definitely point you in the right direction. And they have scheduled hours for specific events so yep. if you're looking for any particular game come that's on right. by there, there's days for different things talk to the people working here there's yep. either going to be a day for it or there's going to be a group that comes here to do it absolutely and, and everybody is you know. super informative and happy to talk to you uh, magic Fridays and Saturdays seem to be our days yep. um, but I know like Wednesdays are like role playing games and there's I think there's a Star Wars day for different Star Wars games and tabletop days the whole deal every time I come in here there's a different group of geeks doing something yep so come on down have a good time it looks like we got the dice roll I'm not sure who won the dice roll that was a weird die roll yeah I, they might have been playing poker or they just were dying playing three rolls but somebody won the dice roll just trying to make it difficult for yeah. us that's what they do maybe Jake can find out <laughs> I, I, I'm actually just interested to know who won the dice roll to see if they chose to play or draw first I think you are the only one choosing to draw I don't know anymore because I have shared my sermon a couple times with some people. I'm not going to say I'm better than you in this format, but it feel, it still feels It feels very weird. Wrong. It, it was the, it was the hardest thing to get the used to for me. <laughs> but draw, draw is almost always the best play here. Actually, the interesting part is if Mark was playing, he was one of the kind of decks that doesn't want to draw. He'd be on the play. He'd be on the play. But Brian... Uh, with all his bombs, you want to draw. You want as many opportunities as you can to either draw a Icy Manipulator, a Karn, something along those lines. So for Brian, the faster he gets into the later part of the game. Yes. Or the not even the later. Like Basically, the fastest he can get to turn 4 to 6, that's his sweet spot. And then turn like 9 and 10 is when he wins. Okay. Because 4 to 6 is like a really good bridge to 9 and 8 for Brian specifically. Because his 4... Um, has Icy Manipulator, it has like Bailoth Gorgers, which are 4-4s, four um, it has Karn, all of which are like things that stick on the board more than one turn very likely, um, so that'll buy him enough time to get to his late game. Now one of the things I'm curious about hmm? is if they have Karn tokens, Construct tokens. Oh, Construct tokens. Those are rare and a table. little expensive. They, they're getting pricey. It's a couple bucks. Yeah. And they print the tokens based on the rarity of the effect that That's makes them. right. So the Karn Karn and Mythic and the Benelia Knights are both yeah. the, the Mythic tokens, as it were. So I'm not sure if they're going to have that if it becomes a fat turner. We'll see. Yeah. I'm sure they have something to use. And if not, I've got stuff in the booth here they can grab. So but let's I'm see sure if we can get some hand cam action. No. Hand cam? No hand cam. We don't have cam oh, cams. Oh, okay, okay. What are you talking about hand cam? <laughs> Looks like green-white. Is what I'm seeing on Ernest's side. Uh, Brian is definitely trying to show off his hand. I think he's pretty happy with it. Ernest was not, though. Ernest is going to go to six. So, Brian, just hold your hand up so we can see it. There, oh, we, there go. we go. Okay. Oh, so, he's got three lands, a Karzov to finish the game, Lenor, Envoy, Bailoth Gorger, and I did not see the red card, but he uh, can play... Oh, there. Kelden Warlord. And so he's got the Envoy to filter the lands to get yep. the black. Yep. Like so so yeah. he can play something on three. Well, you can play turn two Envoy. Oh, is the Envoy the one three put a land in play? Or is it that three two that filters? Envoy is the filter. So the filter costs three. Okay. 
right. Oh, look. It looks like Ernest. That's where Baird went. Yeah, that's where Baird went. Shield of the Realm is really strong. It's like my one of my underrated. It's better than you think. Yeah, it, it's my under one of my underrated picks for Dominaria. We saw that with Lance in the standard. Form yeah, a exactly. Weeks ago, we saw that that card will, it'll come up where you have one creature that you just can't get by because it's yep. been shielded. Very good choice of a revised island. I, or sorry, revised forest. Is that a seal away? That is, that looks like a seal away. So two mana. Ernest actually has a very solid hand here. Yeah. Yeah. And it looks now like he's down a card. He is down a card. Um and Ryan drew the swamp. It looks like he's on kind of a knights thing that we talked about. Yeah. A mid rangey green white. It looks it reminds me a lot of Mark's deck. Yeah, it does. Um so it looks Ernest looks like he went with equipment. Yeah. So looks like he's considering the shield. It's gonna Yeah. I don't think he had any reason not to do that. He might have done, wanted to do a Jousting Lance. But I was just wondering why he didn't play the shield last turn. Yeah. Well, he might have been... The only thing I was thinking was he had Seal Away. Yeah. But the thing has to be attacking to use that. Mm -hmm. Or tapped. So. so Brian plays the Envoy. It looks That's like... the he, second Seal Away. Sorry. He picked up uh, another land, so he should be able to play... Uh, his turn four play. Yeah, he should be able to play his Bailout Gorger, which is relevant here. There's a second mountain that he drew. So attack for three. It looks like Seal Away's coming in. Yep. Sufficient answer. Yeah. Uh, Brian's thinking about his second main. He'll play the... M it looks like he picked up another mountain. So he, he, he So actually getting lands are really good for Brian here because he's he has a way to win the game with, in Karazov, Kazarov, yeah. the Kazarov and uh, a couple of higher costed cards. Um, the Keldon Warlord is relevant because it steals a creature for a turn if you kick it. So it costs three to do it, uh, three to cast it with haste. But if you kick it for four, I or sorry, if you kick it for four, costs seven total. You can steal a creature for a turn. So it's another good. Uh, it's another good. Uh, yeah. Uh, finisher. And he's already up to five mana. So oh, it looks like the second bail away on the Belos. Yeah. That's actually very strong because. I'm not exactly sure what Brian's picked up recently. So he does play the Warlord for haste. Without the kicker. It's Without still the a kicker. It's a 3 1 haster. Oh, no haste. No, it does have haste. It does haste. He opted not to attack. He opted with it. not to attack. Baird. There's Baird. So now each attack is going to cost a mana. Yeah, he has a little bit of attacks now. I believe it's just one. I'm going to double check. It's just one, yeah. Should be. So Brian should be able to go up to six mana here with the other mountain. I wonder what he drew though. Good old steward. One thing I thought was a oversight was I thought Baird should have been a knight. There's a big knight presence, and he does fit the build. Yeah, I think he would have been too strong, but flavor wise, yeah, he he's a knight. It would have been way. fitting as a knight. Yeah. Looks like Brian is six going mana to. For Sapperling, Sapperling migration. migration? Okay, so he makes four Sapperlings for six. Because he kicked it. Yeah, because he kicked it. Two, three, four. Alright. Which is actually a little awkward because with Baird out there, he can't really <laughs> get in there with all the 1-1s one -ones without having to pay Yeah, he's going to have to take a turn off yeah. casting if he exactly, wants to attack exactly. So Dauntless Bodyguard, a card we've seen in Standard a couple times in some of our matches. A we'll little, pr pr little protection for Baird. Yep. Uh, a lot more protection <laughs> for Baird. Baird also has Vigilance, so he can be crashing in for a while. For for two. Yeah. But against a 3-1 Overseer, that makes it a lot more difficult to block, because now each of those saplings deals no damage to him. Correct. And he dubbed it. So he's a 4-6... That can be indestructible if he needs to be. Yeah. First striker, by the way. And, and a knight now. So so, hey, so flavor wise we have a win. Yep. Alright, he's tapping to indicate the attack. Yeah, so he's coming in for four. Yeah. And yeah, we take a chump right there. If Brian blocked with the overseer, he would deal one damage to it. Yeah. He just wants to maintain his life total. Hopefully I believe he only needs one more no, two more black. Oh, two more mana for uh, Karazov. Now, most of the removal that I saw on Brian's hand, or when he was building, was red. Yep, which, which is damage based, which doesn't do well against. We saw that last standard, or yeah. standard. It's it's kind of rough. 
That's a sparring construct. Mm -hmm. So when that dies, he gets to move a counter onto one of his other creatures. Yep. And it's relevant if he ends up picking up a Karn, because he can construct out. Yep. Um, the other thing which Brian actually might want to be hoping to see is an Icy Manipulator here. To start tapping down Baird instead yep. of chomping mm -hmm. it. And I think I saw a fight with fire in Brian's hand. Did it you was. see that? It was. So, okay, so it costs 10 to fight with fire? To deal 10 to, damage? To, to kick to it? To kick it? Is it 10 or 9? I believe it's 9. Okay. I'm double checking for us. Sure. Uh, but might it be by Jake? 3, 6, 7. Oh, here it is. It is 9. Darn you, Jake. It's, Jake is Jake's getting quick. quick. Yeah, Jake's, Jake's quick on the so job. So it's 9 to kick it, but it's 10 damage however you want to do it. Right. And any, yeah, he can spread it around. Yeah. Uh, the it's, big issue is that the oh knight of grace followed by a jousting lance yeah so all right so he wants the one one counter he's going to put it onto the Keldon. so it's now a four two mm -hmm. um the fight with fire actually doesn't do much to bard again because the dauntless bodyguard is protecting him yep this is a very interesting deck that ernest has pieced together he's trond up a very large Baird is piece. very well protected yeah and the fact that he is messing up Brian's attack is, while also yeah. getting well protected it's is very, very strong. Uh, I don't know if we... Did we see an Eviscerate on Brian's side at all? Or... All the removal I saw was red. Oh, that's... And the Kazarev. Alright, so Kazarev... So, here's the thing. Brian, if he can keep Kazarev uh, alive... He can he, get big. He can race. He can race in yep. the air. He's got chumpers, He's and got each chumpers. time he chumps, that's yep. counter for Kazarev. Absolutely. And I believe that Ernest is on zero card. This is he's all playing off the top. He's played out, yeah, yeah. Which is one of the problems with, like we were talking about for Mark. Yeah. Once white and green plays their stuff, they don't have a lot of draw. When, once you tron up something like this, um, I mean, you don't have extra cards. No. You've used all your cards to tron up a creature. So that Knight of Grace now getting the pump from the Jousting Lance, which so is a plus two and for a strike, all and a plus turn. from Kazarev, which Brian was nice enough to play for him. Oh yeah. That's right. So it's three, five, five, two first strike. Five, yeah. Um, I think that'll be okay because what Brian will tend to do is probably chump here, even maybe take some of the damage, and then use Kazarov's ability to nail the uh, Knight of Grace and the. Uh, he cannot. Dot. It's hexproof from black. Oh. So Brian can do nothing. To that Knight of Grace right Ooh. now, except chump it. Sneaky. He can yeah. he can uh, do it to the Dauntless Bodyguard though, which is important. Which would force the sack for industry. Correct. Yep. Um, and if he does it that way, he can if he gets to three, six, seven, eight, one more land next turn. Uh, the turn after that, he can fight with fire for ten the Bard, which looks like he found the land. So the line, but so Kazarov's ability is four damage to deal two, to or four, four mana to deal, to deal two, two damage. Yeah. So if he, so he has enough to do it twice. Yeah. He should do the bodyguard first. So, it looks like he's announcing an activation. Yep. Who is he targeting? Can't target that. Yeah. We got Ben there. That should be there to remind him. Hey, Jake. They cannot. Target that with Kazarev. All right, Ben is on it. Our ben judge is on it. Yeah, pointing out to Brian that it is hexproof from black. So even though it's red mana, it the source of the ability is black. So Correct. it's a black ability. There you go. So looks like they're fixing that up. And now that is not a legal target. So because there is a legal target, he has to choose a legal target for the ability. Yeah. And so Ernest. Like you said, responding by making Baird indestructible. Did Brian re-respond by shooting it again? That's what it looks like. Because he did tap the mana once Ernest reached for right. the bodyguard. So, bodyguard trigger on the stack. Mm -hmm. Re-respond by shooting it again. Now... If he shoots the bodyguard, bodyguard dies, there's nobody to take the damage because he sacked the bodyguard. Right. And there's no point where he can Oh yeah, he can't respond, he can't respond it back. So he just I guess so he, he just he lost he the activation. He dealt two damage to Baird, I believe. Oh, okay. Which was prevented. Right. 
Makes sense. So he chose the other legal target and just got prevented. So he can't even target his creatures with Kazarev to get him any bigger. Well, he can't now. Cause now there's the sapling. Ernest That's left burnable. some saplings. Saplings can get burned. Wow, this is actually a very interesting match. There's a yeah. lot of dynamics going on here. Because there, there, there is an argument uh, for Ernest to not play those saplings at all. Because it gives targets for Kazarev to get Yeah, because in the race, I think he's winning the race without the Sapperlings. Yeah. Because he Brian has to basically chump block each, both of the creatures a turn. Nice little swap of the Sapperlings. Yeah. <laughs> I trade you... Conservation two. of tokens. Yep. Also, well, Brian decided to take the damage from Bird for four, or... No, from... From the Knight of Grace. From the Knight of Grace. Well, he took it from one of them. So. They're both dealing four. The Knight of Grace is dealing five. Five, you're correct. So he took it from the Baird. Baird, right? The yeah. Baird is two. With the dub, it's dub four. Dub is four. Yeah. And that's the shield, yeah. So you took the Baird. <coughs> okay, so. Time to start mowing the lawn. Yeah. So, let's see, he has one, two, three, four, five, six. Does he have nine? He can fight with fire for nine. Bard is how much... How, what's his Bard's butt? Bard's butt is six, eight total, theoretically. If he wanted to commit that to him. Right now, yeah. it looks like he's just looking at Kazarev. Yeah. Kazarov. Kazarov. As Hermione would say. Leviosa. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so mowing down some saplings. Alright, so we got a bigger Kazarov. So he, here's my thought. There's a way to take out his creatures, or Brian's just going to race him and then shoot him in the face for 10 with Fight with Fire. Fight for Fire feels great when you take your opponent out with yeah. it. Yeah. Th that's why. It would get rid of Baird, but it feels so good dealing exactly. 10 damage out of nowhere. Oh no! He, he's just casting it he's for just five. Just casting it for the the five damage. Knight of Grace. That's enough to get it. Yeah, take out the Knight of Grace. And it has been a problem for him. So Karazov gets a counter though, off of that. It does. Yeah. There's the indication. Mm-hmm. So he'll be rolling in for six, over the top. Paying the tax for Baird. Yep. I believe this is another example of that shield doing a lot more than people give it credit for. That's why this is, that's one of my sleeper picks yeah. because all of a sudden you have creatures that you think that you should be able to take care of and you now you can't even take care of it with one, two, or three yeah. cards, which is like, that's and, that's all you want. And I'm not sure if he's going to give the Jousting Lance to a Sapling or Baird. I Either put one on. right now seems... So the, Decent. Earlier we talked about how Jousting Lance on Sapperlings is a thing. Jousting Lance on Sapperlings is a thing. Because it's a 3-1 <laughs> first striker coming in every turn. It's it's better than like... Which the, is enough to take out either of his blockers. Any of the stuff, and yeah. And prevent Kazarov from getting any counters. It's basically having another knight on the... Uh, yeah. Knight of Grace on, on the uh, field for him. Ernest thinking about it. I don't know what he drew, but it, it's making him... Brian is out of cards as well, right? He drew a land and he's thinking that hard. He's he's playing with us. <laughs> he's trying to figure out which lands. He's messing with our head. I, that, that's that's a good place to put the lands. This is interesting too because both of them have have uh, an incentive to protect their life totals. Yep. Because both of them on any given turn could die. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this one of the. looking at this, if if Brian had left the knight alone. Mm-hmm. Ernest is at 10. Yeah, I, that's what I'm saying. I think if he leaves the knight alone... Fight with Fire would have ended it. Just, just finish that turn. Yeah, just jam the Kar Karazov, go for and then just try to shoot him in the face for 10. Yeah. Now, Ernest moving the shield, so Baird losing a little bit of protection, but Brian's only got one mana, so it's okay for the turn. Yeah. But it does... I don't know. So it looks like Ernest decides he wants to jam all the way. This is pretty decent because... He's well, at 10. He's at 10, yeah. It doesn't force a, a block. These aren't these aren't awful attacks. He is representing a charge. Yeah. He has mana up, so also he does with represent growth. a combat trick. So Brian thinking about combat tricks. Alright, so 
He'll take that. I think he's going to block the shield guy. Or that guy, sure. Okay. And then take th four? Yeah, that's four. Three plus one yep. plus one plus two. One at the chandelier. One at the door. Right. Sorry, I'm trying to go clue on this one. <laughs> that, that is four. It's a swing for four. Two creatures were dealt dam damage. damage. Yep. Two of Vernus creatures. It's only one an opponent's creature. Yep. Takes damage. And now Karazov can come for eight, but what Brian can do is just uh, deal two damage to each sapperling and just come and swing in for the uh, Make a lethal. For lethal. Yeah. So just pop sapperling one, pop sapperling two, and then that's ten in the air? Yeah. Looks like Brian's going to take this game. Let's see, he's wondering if... Right now there's one green mana yeah. on Ernest's side, which I don't believe... I don't think it's enough to stop, yeah. Him. So you pop the first one, that's one counter. So it's up to nine. Yep, pop the second one, that's another counter. And then swing in for ten. So going back and watch, watching this game from start to finish. Mm -hmm. Kazarev, we knew was going to be a big factor. Yep. But he was negated by the Hexproof from Black. Yep. And by Baird's Shield. So, like, we talked was about... the Sapling Migration? And I was about to say, I think I think the line of play is actually don't play the Sapling yeah. Migration at all. Because um, he was up on creatures. Yeah. And he was forcing blocks from Brian at that point. Yeah, because Brian can only come in with a 4-4 Flyer. And you are coming in with 9 every Baird turn. Baird was 4-6 and the other guy was a 5-2. Five, five, two. Two. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of times in Magic, learning like the little intricacies of things, like a lot of times it's what you don't do rather yeah. than what you do. You don't have to be proactive if you're ahead on board, for example. Because that, that seemed like a reasonable play. You yes. get four bodies you get out four there. four bodies. And you're able to kill him faster. You just jam more, yeah. But Kazarov being Kazarov mm -hmm. made those four bodies backfire against him. Yep. That's why Magic is such an interesting and complicated game is that there's so many different little factors that you want to keep in, you yeah. know, there's a lot of general rules you can follow, but there's a couple little details that, that God lives in the details, as it were, right? And you never know what's coming off the top. Never know. So, like, alternatively, uh, Brian still had Fight with Fire at that one point yeah. and enough mana to kick it. There was There were lines of play which involved nothing to do with the Sapperling really migration where he might have just... If he hadn't done that, he yeah. might have died of the fight before. He might have just gone straight in. Um, one other thing I'd like to illustrate is that uh, when you looked at kind of towards the end of that game, both players were out of cards, right? Yes, both empty-handed. So the thing I've noticed about Dominaria and the reason why you want to be on the draw to have more cards is that almost always your games go to who gets the better card off the top. So the more chances so the you get to... you get, the better. Yeah, the more chances you get to pull something off the top... Uh, the more likely it is you'll pick up a card, say, like Fight with Fire late in the game, or uh, a Bayloth even there would have been a 7-7. Seven seven. Yeah. Like, uh, anytime you can get that extra look at more cards or have more cards in this format, in a, I, I would call Dominaria a, high, a pretty high-powered set, but like with expensive costs. Like, the stuff is really good, but it's a lot more expensive than you normally would. Right pay for it, so any time that you can get yourself positioned for the late game better in uh, Dominaria, I think it's better. So I'm interested to see, Brian won here. Ernest probably will go on the play. Ernest will probably be on the play, we'll see. Looks like they're just getting shuffled up. They both sideboarded a couple cards in. I don't know exactly what we what came in, but no big changes. Not not a huge amount of difference. I think Ernest uh, going into game two, knowing that we saw Karzov and that sort of thing, and he also saw fight with fire. He did. So he has to think a little bit about uh, the seal aways. Maybe we use seal hold or seal away for a bigger threat. Like I don't think Karzov. he's going to seal away an off way. Again, exactly. Man. Like uh, yeah. Game one, if you're thinking maybe I just need to blindly seal away an envoy, that's not unreasonable. It, it's reasonable. Yep, they're playing an envoy because they're probably multicolored. If you Absolutely. Take away that fixing from them. Yep, 
it forces them to draw the land. It's also which a free Brian to just get rid of early. Yeah. But knowing what the bomb is, I think he will save a removal spell for it. Definitely. The problem is Brian has multiple bombs. That's true. But but Ernest doesn't know that. He does not. Or Ernest just knows about that one, and because he knows that exists, I would probably hold an extra removal spell for it, I if at agree. all possible. I would agree. Yeah. We will see how this goes. I like that they're both playing uh, Sapperling Migration, though. I think that's yeah. a nice little <laughs> stare-off. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very efficient card. It's it either. gave Brian a lot of blockers. Yeah, so it gives you uh, two Sapperlings to start, and then if you get it later in the game, you have six Sapperlings, or yeah. four Sapperlings. It's still very solid. Because yeah. Brian's early game was two solid creatures. Like you said, yep. a 3-2 followed by a 4-4. Four, four. Yep. Both answered by seal ways, but then he followed that up with four one ones. Yep. So he kept the, was able to keep the pressure on. Between that, the uh, war caller and the uh, sparring construct, he had chump blockers for days too. Yeah. And and the chump blockers matter because whenever he deals damage, Karzov gets bigger. So it's a nice little synergy that he has there. Except against the shield. Except against the shield. And first strike. Which actually makes me wonder if Brian brought in an artifact destruction card because because we see Ernest with um, Dub. Shield and jousting lance. I'll bring in anything that destroys artifacts and enchantments. We've seen that he's committed to equipment, yeah. right? So, like, invoke the divine in white, in green, yeah. broken bond. Um, I don't know if there's one in black. I don't think there's one in black. Black, no. Uh, red, red has to have an artifact destruction spell, right? Well, we'll see. Let me think about it. Uh, red, black, or green has one though. Broken bond. Green has broken bond. White broken has it, been, which yeah. is isn't all white. So Llanowar Elf turn 1 into a Baloth. Yep, and a Sarah uh, disciple. disciple turn 2. This is a solid starting yeah. 7. That's He's only got one white. And That's fine, he does though. have double white cards. And he can cast everything in his hand, though. Yeah. So Because he has four lands. Um, even if the Llanowar Elves goes down, he can cast the Baloth Gorger. This seems like a very solid 1-2-3 uh, start for Ernest here. Because on 1, he can play Elves. On 2, he can play the Disciple. and 3, he can play the... Bailon's going to Brian looks like mulling down to six. Oh, we got cuts on cuts on cuts. So, for those of you watching from home, uh, we got f right now five of you out there. We appreciate y'all joining us on yeah. our Friday night. Hope you're um, all ready for Core 2019 coming up. Or if you're already doing it, let us know how it's going. Absolutely. Because we're a bit behind most of the world. That's true. It's actually so. pre-releases and stuff on... Uh, in. Yeah, is that a broken bond? I see a broken bond. That's a sideboard <laughs> card all day. <laughs> Looks like a mammoth spider in the back. Yep. Jaya's emulating Inferno. So that's the thing. That's the reason why I don't like Inferno. Is it's uncastable right It's now. uncastable. It's just a dead card right now. But it's a late game card. It's a late game card. You don't want 100%. it right off at yep. the beginning. Agreed. So Llanowar's turn one feels good. Turn two, he's gonna play the Sarah, Sarah Disciple. Disciple. Get some he didn't opt not to attack. Alright, decided not to get in for the one. It's easy to forget the secret mode on Llanowar Elf that it's I a know. one creature. Well when Llanowar Elves becomes alpha. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so th this looks like a good turn to cast the Bayloth Gorger. There we go. So he's got his 4-4 four, four Gorger out. I see Manipulator in hand for Brian. Ooh, that's a great so card to see. Jake's switching over to Brian's hand for us to show us that Manipulator, I think. He's also got a Thalid Omnivore. Yep. This actually might be a, a quick game, because uh, Ernest is curving out, and Brian does not have answers in the time. Like, he needs to be he's able to He's got the Manipulator to get rid of the big guy. The big guy. But there's a second big guy. Yeah, I was about to say, but then his partner's here. Oh, no. And it looks like he's running double nature spiral. <laughs> so he's ready for the removal. Yeah. Still not swinging with the elves. The nature, that's actually good because the icy manipulator is a, a bit of a soft removal piece. So, like, right. uh, one of the things that can work out really well for Brian is he can just keep th tapping things down. Yeah. Um, and because it's not going in the graveyard, there's no way to spiral it back. No hesitation from Brian Cassie and Icy yeah. Manipulator. He needs to stop the bleeding as quickly as possible. He's and taking nine this turn. Yeah, and for one for one mana, being able to stop a Gorger is really important. <coughs> I don't think it'll be enough, though. He needs to do yeah. removal. He, he but needs then removal. the double nature spiral is not going to let that work. 
Yeah, but it buys him time, right? One turn. One turn. Yep. Brian, Brian has late game, so buying time is important. Like, if he can sapperling migration and just buy time... Brian okay. has no late game this game. Yes. It looks like he has a Mammoth Spider. This is going to be a fast game. <laughs> he does have Mammoth Spider, which... Well, block we'll do one. Do a good job yeah. getting in front. He's at six. But it means he can't use the manipulator now. Yeah, I think he just dies here because four, five, six. He's at six. Well, he can block the Sarah disciple. <laughs> I mean, he still dies. He's though, got right? reach. Yeah, this there's no late game in this one. I don't think. Yeah, well, when you can go Lanor elves, Sarah disciple, Bailoth, Bailoth, that's really good curve. That's curving out to yeah. its finest. Yeah. Oh no, get so in with the Lanor Elves! It still takes five. Go, Ernest! Get in with the Lanor Elves! Lethal, the Elves swing! That's go three with, times he has a swing! Go with the Lanor Elves! This is Ernest looking at the Elves and saying, Alright, they're a ramp spell. Yeah. Because <laughs> Brian's at one. He's at one. That would have been. That would have been. He would have been dead if he attacked at yeah. all with the Elves. Yeah. I mean, I think Brian's still dead. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it's very easy to forget that yeah. you can attack with the Elves. Yeah. We're gonna have to give him a hard time about that later. It's okay. He'll he'll watch the vod. Oh, he'll remember. <laughs> he'll remember next time. Let's see if Brian has a way out of this mess. Well, he's playing it like he does. Does not look like it in his hand. There he goes. Yeah, yeah. He put. He he gave a good fight. He tried. Yeah. Well, it's really hard to with the curve. Double like velocity. Yeah. It's, Starting on turn three. If you don't have an answer yeah. for the ramp piece with Lanowar Elves, things can get out of hand really badly. Yep. Um, but that's been the case since Lanowar Elves has existed. There's a reason they said they were too good to be printed for years. For many years. That that was a card that was never supposed to come back, they said. When was the last time they printed that? It was in 7th. I was about to say 7th edition was the last um, time I remember. It hasn't been modern. I ha haven't seen it in modern. Well, no, it's all classed by Noble Hierarch. Yeah, but was it in 10th? I have to check. <laughs> it's been a while since I've seen Lana Yeah. Elves, so let's put it that way. Yeah. Uh, give me a minute, I will let you know. It's standard, it's less powerful right now because of the Chain Whirler Boogeyman, and now the kind of random Black Horse Boogeyman thing. Um, I don't know if that's actually going to be a good card just yet, but... We'll find out. Yeah. But Lana Elves just isn't in the most friendly environment right now um, in standard, but in limited it's, as we see, is incredibly powerful. Right. Lanor Elf's the most recent print I'm seeing is Magic 2012. Okay. So Sounds it has right. been. It, it's, it's been legal in, in modern, just outclassed by other cards. Yeah. Exalted is a keyword. But I do remember after Magic 2012, they specifically said, it's too fast. Yeah. And we're not going to print it anymore. And now, they're reevaluating and... Yeah. We, we've had Cha design trade. Richard Garfield tends to push a lot of cards he used to like. <laughs> and I'm okay with that because yeah. I like all those cards. And right now, current standard, Chain Whirler yep. keeps it in check. Keeps anyway, it in check. So. Um, so, okay. I know I talked about going in blind, being on the draw. Right. One other thing is, if you're playing against the tempo deck, who likes to be on the play, it's very relevant of a strategy <laughs> just to steal the play back from them. So if you're against a tempo deck mm -hmm. that wants to be on the play, yes, you're saying it's good to let them be on the play. No, no, it's you can steal it back. Like so. So you're saying like if going in blind. I I don't know who I'm playing. I'll okay. probably be on the draw. Okay. But if I know I'm playing a tempo deck after game one, I'll probably be on the play to uh, to kind of cut them off from curving out. Basically, Lana World. Decks. They can't see this on the stream because we don't have a camera. But there is literally smoke coming out of my ears right now. <laughs> trying to understand I know. what you're telling me. It, it's it's so. next leveling the next <laughs> level stuff. But basically, if you play against a, a deck with Lana War Elves or uh, Red Blue Wizards, which are like I just want to kill you before you can do anything. Okay. Um, instead of being on the draw, which I like to be on in this set, I'll just take the play and just hope that. My top decks are better, enough. yeah. Okay. Because you know that their top decks aren't going to be better than yours if they're right. a, a quicker, faster deck. So maybe you just try to take the play back. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. It, it it's this weird back and forth kind of thing. Once you get into the really nitty gritty of it, I'm just saying it makes sense. So hopefully we can move on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna agree right now. Yeah. 
All right, so no Lanoir Elves for Ernest. It looks like Brian took the draw. We're going to have an honest game here. Yeah. We got that jousting lance sweet jousting play. lance. Yep. Brian has access to all three colors now. Ooh, he was looking for that for Fight with Fire. G2 so, Chronicler. It okay. will get a... It's two, but for six, you can kick it and get an instant or sorcery back from your graveyard. Oh, looks like he has the natural Jun colors on three, <laughs> which is very, very good for Brian. And Playing a 3 1 haste. And he's going to come in for four. We got Seal Away on the Warlord, preventing some damage. Totally fair. So just taking damage from the Chronicler mm -hmm. now. So we'll see if uh, Ernest can slam something. Oh, he has no Gideon's threats. Gideon's reproach in hand, Okay, though. so he has, he has ways to get rid of stuff. But currently, yep. he doesn't have a threat on the board to put the lance on, which is going to be troublesome. And I see an icy again. And a fight with fire and a Jaya. Yep. Jaya's immolating Inferno. Brian seems to have a lot of answers in his hand right now. Yep. And with okay. Ernest not having any early presence, any threat on the board, it's... It's rough. It's getting rougher every turn. Yeah, because the icy manipulator now is... You can all kind of count Ernest down a creature, as it were. It looks like Brian's about to holler. Yep, he's going to holler for one. He's saving the one mana, it looks like, for the Icy and playing the Halar. Yep. Holla. <laughs> that just feels so much more right. Right. Holla. All right, so Ernest... Not, oh, what did he pick up? So he picked up a Knight, which is great. He can equip the Joust to it. Big but problem. Icy Manipulator. And... Even with the Joust, it's only first strike when it attacks. Uh, on your turn, I think. Yeah. On your turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but the Knight already has block? first strike okay. too. So okay. So that that's good. And he's sitting on a Gideon's Reproach, so he's not going to equip because he wants to keep the mana. But that also signals, hey, I've got a steal away. Yeah. Or something. So end of turn, so. Brian's going to tap away the uh, the, the knight. blocker. Yep. So it looks like he has fight with fire still. He's missing the second red source to cast it. Uh, to kick it, rather. Well, he's also missing a few lands. Yes, yes. So he'll get there. Right now there's no blocker and he's swinging in for five. Yep, then it looks like the reproach will come in. Brian has a gift of growth, which he'll kick, I believe, making his creature a 8-8. Eight -eight. Well, gets a plus one, plus one. Yep. Gift the growth is plus two, plus two, but if he kicks it, it makes it plus four, plus four. So he'll be an eight, eight, and then he'll deal one damage to Ernest. Plus the eight, plus the eight. Unblocked. Correct. Plus the chronicle. Plus, so that's ten. He'll do ten <laughs> damage this turn to Ernest. So Ernest playing the the right play. You play that's your move on the attack. That's what you do. Yeah. And getting punished for it. Yep. Brian just had uh, had the the nice yeah. kicker card in hand. This was Brian's turn to have the the bomb opening hand. Mm -hmm. And Halar lives. Halar lives, and all, he so. still has mana up for Icy Manipulator. Super strong. So this could be it for Ernest if he doesn't find anything. Yeah, Ernest and needs to... it looks like he just got land. Equips the knight. And I think this game we're seeing the power of the Manipulator. Yep. That's why that card is like, you slam pick that almost over all rares at yeah. this point. It's, it fits any deck. Yep, fits any deck for four. It just does a lot of work on board. So that's a swing for six. Yep. Four, five, for five, for five. For five, sorry. For five. Got the other envoy. And Ernest needs something big. Short of a Fumigate, which isn't even in this. Yeah, the only uh, White Sweeper requires you to have a Legendary Legendary creature. Permanence, yeah. yeah. So you tap it before, yeah. And he's holding a planes. Yep. So this is where you just watch, and maybe he skips the attack step. Maybe. But this is also where you just, uh, you know, extend your hand to your opponent. Make him kill me. Yep. Make him have it. <laughs> yeah. It was there a good it match. Is. It was a good match. Very good match. Three solid games of Fair Magic. Ernest <laughs> we, had his fun game too, that's for we, sure. We got to see two very different styles of play in Dominaria. Yep. Trining up a creature is a very relevant strategy here, especially if it's a creature you can't kill. 
That was an impressive bird. Yeah. Um, or bird. And, or... and I like Ernest's thoughts about having the equipment with the saplings and yeah. all, all the good things. Um, but Now, when he goes back and watches this, mm-hmm. I do think had he not gone with the saplings, yes. he had game one. I think that, uh, yeah, I mean... And that would have completely changed... It'll change a lot of the math, game. for sure. 